Everything is going just fine in China. There's nothing to see here. Move along, folks. Disregard what you see over here. It's just a column of freaking tanks rolling down the street, lining up outside the Bank of China in Shandong province. And don't worry, because historically, it's not like anything horrible happens when the Chinese send their tanks down the street in the city, right? Nothing bad ever happened. What's up, guys? I'm nobody special, and the situation in Chinese banks looks like it's escalating out of control real fast. Today, tanks rolling down the street. Now, I've seen reports that are saying this is happening in Henan province, and I've also seen that it's happening in Shandong province. I haven't been able to confirm which it actually is, but I can confirm that there are tanks rolling down the street in China in at least one place protecting one of their banks. With that, we are going to shrink my big melon of a head. And look at this. It is all over Twitter today, video after video. It's the same clip showing these tanks, some from different angles, rolling down the street. Here we're saying this is in Shandong province. I've also seen articles like this one at NDTV saying that this is happening in Henan province. So again, I still don't know which one it is, but here's what we do know, that China is in the midst of a mortgage boycott. Some might call it a revolt. And this all stems from that video I posted last week when the Chinese government sent goons in street clothes to beat and round up protesters in front of the People's Bank of China in Zhengzhou. Now, I also mentioned in that video that some of the people who had deposited their money in some of these banks were being told that their funds were being replaced with wealth management products, which are unsecured investments, i.e. you're never going to get your money back. And it looks like the Henan branch of the Bank of China has just done that same thing and the government is trying to get out in front of people rushing to the bank to get their money out. And if you want to dissuade people from making a run on the banks, well, why not just park tanks out front of the branch? And reading from this article in Bloomberg dated yesterday, Xi faces surprise revolt from Chinese home buyers on a mortgage boycott. The mortgage boycotts have spread across 301 projects in 91 cities. Now, as of Friday was the last time we were able to get any reliable data it was 230 projects in 86 cities. So this boycott is still spreading rapidly across China. It's spiraling out of control. The Chinese leader is facing domestic unrest on a range of issues. Over the past few years, President Xi Jinping has reined in China's biggest tech companies, stamped out democracy in Hong Kong, and locked down 26 million people in Shanghai to eliminate cases. Yet now he faces a surprise challenge for middle-class homeowners who are watching their family wealth slip away with a sustained slide in the property market, which makes up a fifth of China's economic activity and some 70% of household wealth in China is tied up in property. Now that's a huge statistic right there. 70% of household wealth in the whole country is tied up in property. Now believe it or not, here in the States, it's a pretty even split between stocks, bonds, and real estate. The average household wealth is pretty evenly split between those three. You've got a lot of equity in your home, and then if you have a pension or a 401k, you've probably got like a 60-40 portfolio in stocks and bonds. And that pretty much evens out to where there's a pretty even allocation in stocks, bonds, and real estate here in the States. It's not like that in China. In China, almost all of it is in real estate. And actually, this number is skewed by the wealthier Chinese because the average Chinese citizen has almost every penny of his wealth tied up in real estate investments. And now the real estate sector is crashing, something we have covered extensively on this channel, starting with Evergrande last fall, talking about just the ridiculous, obscene proportions that the Chinese housing bubble has inflated to. And last year, the Chinese popped that bubble with their three red lines policy. Evergrande was only the beginning. And I was saying all through the fall that this would spread to China's banks. And that's when it becomes a financial crisis. And it looks like that is on the brink of happening now because it started with these small rural banks in Henan province where they shut down back in April. They told people it was for a system upgrade and then they never opened back up. And those people lost everything in those banks. When they went to protest outside the bank, the government sent goons to beat them up and haul them away. Well, now those people have no recourse. So what are you going to do? If you bought a home, it hasn't even been built yet, but you're expected to make mortgage payments. And then the bank takes all of your money, won't even answer the phone. You can't withdraw your funds. You can't access your accounts. Are you going to keep paying your mortgage? Of course not. And all throughout the country, one by one, city by city, project by project, Chinese citizens are saying, heck no, we're not paying for a house that hasn't even been built yet. 
especially not now that the banks are being allowed to just steal our money. And now the Chinese are worried that the average citizen is losing confidence in the banking system and they're going to be running to the bank to withdraw their money while they still can. Well, when those people get to the bank, at least in that one province, they're going to see tanks sitting out front. And the Chinese government is taking this very seriously, not just with the tanks. They are taking steps to try to dissuade the public from a bank run and try to somewhat temper this anger. This also just came out today. The city of Zhengzhou sets a bailout fund as mortgage boycott spreads. Now, they have not released any details about how big this bailout fund is. But what this is, is the provincial government making money available so the banks can lend them to the developers to finish these apartments that have already been sold so that people will start making the mortgage payments on those apartments. But I would just add that most of the state governments or the provincial governments in China, where do they get their money from? The real estate market, from land lease sales. Well, people are not buying land leases anymore because the real estate market is collapsing. So where are these regional governments going to get the money for these bailouts from? That remains to be seen. I don't think this is going to work out so well for them. And unfortunately, now it is scenes like this developing in China. This is what it has come down to. It started with Evergrande and it spread to several other developers and the defaults in the onshore bonds. And then some of the smaller banks went down and then the protests happened. And now the tanks are lining up on the streets. Let's hope this doesn't escalate any further because the last time Chinese tanks got involved in a protest did not end very well for the protesters. So we are going to stay on top of this story as best we can. It's very hard to get information out of China these days because the government is really clamping down on anything getting outside the country. It's been next to impossible to get any kind of updates on how many loans haven't been paid back, how many projects, what the value of those loans is. But I can tell you this, around 7% non-performing loans is when very bad things start to happen in banks. I've done a lot of research into this, and out of most of the banking crises that have happened over the last few hundred years, it usually starts around 7% non-performing loans. That is loans that are either behind on their payments or outright in default on their payments. At 7%, bad things start to happen. Now, according to the official government numbers coming out of China, China was already at 4% a few months ago. And again, that's the official government statistics. And we don't know how BS or not that is because the government censors always manipulate the data. But between the developers going belly up, between the developers not paying their contractors, not paying their employees, now these banks going under, now people not paying their mortgages, it's a good bet we've already crossed that 7% non-performing loan threshold. And this spells big trouble for Chinese banks. And do not think this problem will stay limited to China. China is an absolutely huge market. These banks are all interconnected. Most American companies do some form of business in China. So this problem will not be isolated by Chinese borders. My best guess is when it spreads, the contagion hits Europe's banks first and U.S. multinational earnings after that. Till next time, live small and dream big.